everyone, my name is Marc Mezai and I am leading the Avian Design Team in Europe, located in Lyon, France. Today, Geoffrey, industrial designer, and Oscar, senior design engineer, will show you the approach they have developed for predicting the aesthetics of injected parts using metallic effect master batches. First of all, I would like to thank Autodesk for giving us the opportunity to share this work with you. After a few opening words about Aviant and Aviant design, we will introduce the interest, but also the challenges of using metallic effect master batches versus painting. The methodology of coupling mold flow and rendering software such as Keyshot will be explained, supported with examples. Finally, we will share our conclusions and we will be happy to answer possible questions during a Q&A session. For those of you who are not yet familiar with our company, Poly1 recently acquired Clarion Master Batches. We've joined our two complementary specialty polymer material businesses into one. Under our new name, Aviant, we seek to build a world-class sustainable organization together. We are more than 9,000 diverse and global associates who share a passion for innovation and challenges. We offer about 35,000 specialty polymer solutions to meet our customers' needs. We are serving customers over the world with 105 facilities in more than 30 countries, generating about $4 billion of dollars of yearly sales. We are committed to meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to do the same. People, products, planet, and performance are the four cornerstones of our sustainability strategy. Avian Design is a group of industrial designers and engineers. We help our customers apply best design and engineering practices to successfully develop their new products using Aviant material solutions. Back to the topic of the day. What do we mean by molded in color metallic master batches? And what are they for? These are concentrated metallic colors and effects, specifically formulated, which are either added at the bottom of the press or during the compounding process. This technology avoids our customers an expensive painting operation for more efficiency and flexibility in production. And it also leads to a better ecological and economic performance. We won't go into the details of the technology today. We invite you to refer to the specific documentation available for download and to contact us, of course. Oscar will now describe the approach developed for predicting the aesthetic appearance of parts that use this technology. Thank you, Mark. Yes, yeah, so as effectively as we have heard, MIC is a powerful tool for creating aesthetical and economic ecological development of non-painted parts. However, as with all technologies, there are some challenges to master. And for MIC, one of these challenges are the aspect that can be found in flow, meld, and weld lines. Now, the areas of concern can be identified with the use of a mold filling tool such as Autodesk Moldflow. However, to get an idea of the final aspect of the part, that has been difficult up to now. To be able to predict this aspect and how to avoid bad surprises, knowledge about the trifecta of design, process, and material is necessary. If one of these components are not fully mastered, the final part aspect will not be mastered either. Now, with the knowledge that Aviant has in these three categories, we can be of help in the different stages of developing your MIC part. So let us go into the methodology that is here evaluated on a plate that we can see on screen that has been specifically developed for creating metallic defects. MIC master batch contains small metallic platelets to render a shining surface on the part. This is true if the platelets are oriented as they are intended to be, that is flat along the surface of the part as in example A on the picture here. If the platelets are oriented as in example B or C, the chance of a shiny surface is reduced and the results will be a matter and less bright surface. For this evaluation, we start with the CAD of the model of the part. 
This is evaluated in mold flow to create a number of outputs that are necessary for the rest of the methodology. Now, these outputs are treated in a Python script that we have developed in order to make them compatible with our rendering software. In this case, Keyshot is where we are taking these outputs and uh, creating a rendering of the effects or defects that can be visible on the part. For the mold field evaluation, we will rapidly look at the geometry of the part, the material solution used, and the process settings. In terms of outputs, we will look at the results directly from mold flow and also the same outputs after treatment in the Python script. First of all, the geometry. This is a plate with a through hole in the center. At this position, a weld line will be created where the most non-desired effects of the MIC will be observed. The plate also has two restrictions on each side of the hole where the sensibility of the geometry on the metallic effect can be observed. I will use the extensive material library of Moldflow to create our custom material mockup. To the base resin, we add fillers with the correct aspect ratio and content to well represent the master batch that is added to the resin. On the picture to the left, we can see a representation of what the aspect ratio means for a filler, where an aspect ratio superior to one is a fiber, equal to one is a sphere, and inferior to one is a platelet. In this case, as it is an example, the process settings are left largely automatic. However, the mold fill setup is done in exactly the same way as any other mold fill study would be. Here, we are using a three-dimensional mesh for the part, even if the geometry itself could be well represented by a dual domain mesh. The methodology itself can also be applied for a dual domain mesh, but the outputs of the simulation to use are slightly different. These are the outputs that come directly from mold flow with the red zones designating high shininess and green or blue zones showing areas of concern for the desired effects of MIC. We can well see the non-desired effects that can be encountered in the weld line after the hole and different levels of concern that can be expected after the two restrictions on each side, the top one being less pronounced than the bottom one. After treating these outputs, we obtain a grayscale mapping of the defects that can be expected on the part. Here, a dark color indicates a matte surface, and a white color indicates a shiny spot on the part. With the blended results, which can be created using a weighted result or not, the defects can be noticed from a single point of view. These results can now be used as inputs for a 3D render that can give much more information about the final aspect of the part in different environments. And I will now leave the word to Geoffrey to present the rest of the methodology. Geoffrey? Thank you, Oscar. So I will now present to you the 3D rendering part of the presentation. I will show you how we implemented the simulation outputs as a 3D rendering inputs in our 3D rendering software, Keyshot. So here is Keyshot interface. In the middle, you have the uploaded CAD model. On the left, Keyshot library, where you can find predefined material, environment, and so on. On the right, the control panel of the project, where you can adjust the settings. To start, we used a metallic paint type of material in the software to mimic the molding color metallic effect from Aviant. So we have the base color corresponding to the resin, the metal color corresponding to the filler, and the metal coverage that we'll uh, use here to define intensity of the metal effect. Once everything is set up, we can render the scene. You can see here a perfect rendering where no output from simulation have been integrated, so the effect is perfect. We will use this one as a reference for the next rendering. The following step was to integrate the output from simulation. So on the left, the grayscale images coming from the Python script, making the mold flow output compatible with Keyshot. The image is applied on Keyshot. Here, white mean good metal effect and black bad effect. So you can see the effect on the rendering for each result. This is more contrast representation than an intensity representation that helps to identify possible defect area. During our test, the blended version seems to be the more representative one with reality. So that's the reason why we focus more on this one. Depending on the environment and the spectator point of view, defect can be hide or highlighted. 
So as you can see on this video, the variation of the defect intensity uh, is changing when it's moving. It seems that adding texture on the part have a positive influence. Even if it does not solve the root cause of the aesthetic defect, it can significantly reduce the visual impact of it. I will now leave the word to Oscar, who will explain how we apply this process on a customer project. Thank you, Geoffrey. So as we now have seen how this methodology works, along with the different necessary steps to obtain a three-dimensional rendering using MIC outputs from Moldflow, it's now time to look at the outcomes of this on a real-life project. In this case, the OEM wanted to eliminate the paint process on a metallic effect part in a SUV interior. The part itself is placed in a visible area of the car interior. After the first injections on this part, non-desired effects could be seen on the A side of the part. However, there is no presence of weld lines and therefore the defects were believed to come from flow lines due to the extrusions on the back side of the part. These extrusions are to be sonic welded and are therefore necessary to maintain, seen as the overall geometry is frozen in this case only small changes of the injection strategy could be made. In this case, we created a few different gating scenarios. This can be quite easily changed without an influence on the overall geometry. Three alternatives have been evaluated alongside the original, either with different gate designs or with overflow pockets to alleviate the non-desired effect close to the end of fill. We will not go into detail on the mold flow evaluation here, but I will leave the word to Geoffrey again so that he can walk you through the rendering results of the different cases. Geoffrey. Thank you, Oscar. As we can see, we apply the same process on this project than on the sample plaques we've seen earlier. So thanks to the grayscale pictures coming from mold flow, we obtain this rendering with an intensity of one. And intensity four rendering help us to better identify the critical zones. And here we can see the result of the original design shared by the customer with the gating description you can see on the top left of the slide. Few marks were identified on the edges on this part. So we did add sacrificial cavities on those edges. So even if it's not that easy to, to see it on the screen, we can notice a reduction of this defect so indeed, the, the marks were shifted on into those cavities. With the direct gating, defects are visible even with an intensity of one around the injection point. So direct gating seems not to be a good solution here. On the opposite with a fan gate, defects are less visible. The gray scale picture have a low contrast and is almost white everywhere. So it means the part will have a good metal effect all around the part. It is really hard to see any defect on the intensity one rendering, but also on the intensity four rendering. So we expect to have really positive impact on the aesthetic of this part by using a fan gate. If we take a look at the, all the alternative we've done here, and more specifically on the intensity four rendering uh, to be critical, we can see that the final result are really different depending on how we do inject the part but it also a solution to see that fan gate seems to be the best solution too. As we said it on the sample plaque, our conclusion here are quite similar. Point of view and texture have a significant influence on the defect perception. Environment and spectator location can either help to hide or highlight marks. Texture seems to reduce the defect perception. To conclude on this customer project, we were able to compare our results with real sample, and we were able to compare those two and see a lot of similarity between simulation and real life test. So I will now leave the word to Oscar, who will conclude this presentation. All right, so as a summary of what we've seen today regarding this methodology to evaluate MIC sensibility on an injection process, we can start by saying that it's important to master the trifecta of design, material, and process. With the coupling between mold flow and a rendering software, it becomes possible to get a realistic idea of the final part aspect in its environment. This aspect is dependent on the point of view of the spectator as well as the mold texturing. This is all possible to implement in the methodology. 
Again, using this methodology makes it possible to foresee and to avoid eventual non-desired effects when transitioning to an MIC process even before molding the first parts. It makes this a powerful tool to reduce both time and cost to market for metallic effect parts. We still want to stay humble on this and note that this methodology can certainly be improved and there is still a lot to learn and to explore. However, an automatic link between mold flow and a rendering software could speed up the process itself with less manual labor to get to a final result for a larger part of the mold flow community. We would now like to take the, the remainder of our time allotted to answer any questions uh, that might have come up during this presentation. Thank you very much.